How's everybody out there doing? Welcome to the second week of Real Trees Rut Report. My name is Josh Honeycutt. I am one of your co-hosts and the guy who reports for the Southeast region. And uh, we're super excited to bring the second episode of the season to you guys tonight. And again, the Real Trees Rut Report is brought to you by uh, Tsons, and uh, we're going to be focusing a little bit on their midweight stuff tonight. You know, we've got that cold front coming for a lot of people uh, in a lot of states this weekend, uh, and sooner and later, depending on where you're at. But uh, it, it's definitely time to focus on that midweight stuff from Tsons. Uh, check out that gear at Tsons.com. They've got a lot of cool stuff and cool gear for you to look at there. You can also layer up with their lightweight, midweight, and their base layer stuff. But definitely go give that stuff uh, a look and uh, check it out. So with that, we are really excited about the next few days of deer hunting. It's going to be good across the Midwest, Northeast, and parts of the Southeast. Uh, we have a really, really great, uh, awesome cold front coming that everybody's really pumped about. And uh, so we're going to talk about that a lot tonight. It's kind of similar to the one we had last weekend, but this one's more pronounced. It's a little bigger. Uh, we've got a little bit bigger swing in temperatures coming for us on Friday and Saturday and Sunday, depending on location. Um, but uh, that's going to be some, some really good news coming from all of our reporters uh, just about this afternoon, with the exception maybe of the West regions. But even the West regions are seeing some really good temps right now. So with that, um, overall, you know, focusing on the southeast, I am in Kentucky. I am in uh, the northern part of the southeast region. So, you know, we are, are, are having a really good long-term forecast to, to look forward to. You know, it's still a little bit warm right now for the highs. Today, uh, high was 76. Uh, we were looking at a high of 82 tomorrow and a high of 82 again on Friday. But then all of a sudden, things happen. And on Saturday, the high is 62. That's a 20 degree swing in overnight temperatures, or excuse me, in, in overnight daytime temperatures. So that's gonna be huge. Um, the lows for Saturday morning is gonna be 44. The low for Sunday morning is 34. Um, that's pretty good given the time of year. We typically don't see that type of low temperature uh, this early in October. But it's certainly welcome as hot as it's been for the last few weeks in first part of the season. Um, before I get too far in there, everybody just let me know. Make sure you can see me. Make sure you can hear me. Let me know in the comments. And as always, uh, we definitely want you guys to make this your report. So if you have any comments, put them in the comment section. If you have a report of your own in your area, drop it in the comment section. We're going to give it a shout out. Uh, if you have any questions, please do the same. We'll answer those right here on the live feed. And I'll be able to monitor those because I have the, the uh, questions pulled up right here. Um, and so uh, right off the bat here, Robbie, uh, he says it's been off and on, uh, cold up there, seeing some buck activity pick up already, seeing a big swing uh, in active scrapes right now. Um, and uh, he is he believes that things are really starting to heat up there in Minnesota. So that's great to see, great to hear. Thank you for that. It uh, looks like everybody can see and hear me. So continuing on with the long-term forecast, the really the peak days are going to be Friday afternoon, Saturday, and Sunday. Um, uh, I just can't stress that enough. If the weather lets you get out, there's supposed to be an afternoon thunderstorm in places uh, in Kentucky and Tennessee, especially Friday afternoon. So if you can get out safely, do so. Uh, if you can get off working time. And Saturday is, is, again, is the key day. There's a little bit of morning rain forecasted, but you know if you can swing it and be out there, definitely be out there. Maybe you're in a ground blind. Maybe it's just a light misting rain and you can uh, stand to be out there in it. Um, but definitely take advantage of that. And Sunday is going to be great too. It's going to be a little bit hotter for the high, but it's still only 69 on Sunday. Uh, and you still have that really low temp um, of, of 34 Sunday morning. So it's going to be a great weekend of deer hunting uh, across the southeast and the Midwest. But, you know, there are some states that aren't seeing this cold front, but they're mostly down in the deep south. So we'll get into those here 
momentarily. So with the rest of the, you know, the bulk of our southeast region report, we'll start in Florida because that's where it's the hottest this time of year. Things really haven't changed much in Florida since last Wednesday night. Right now, the hottest Florida counties are those up and down the east coast, just as they were last week. Uh, Okeechobee, St. Lucie, uh, Martin, Indian River, Brevard, Seminole, Volusia, Flagler, and Putnam seem to be the hottest right now. That's really the same as last week. Um, that said, according to the Florida Fish and Wildlife Commission, Manatee, Sarasota, Highland, Citrus, Gilchrist, Al Alachua, Lafayette, Taylor, Hamilton, Columbia, Baker, Union, and a few other surrounding counties are starting to pick up again. That's almost identical to our report last week, but that's what things, you know, that's what everybody's telling us. So um, th that seems to still be the case down there. Things haven't changed, and things happen slowly in Florida anyway. So some of our Florida reports historically might have a little bit of overlap from week to week, uh, at least more so than the rest of the states that we report on in the southeast. Uh, moving to Arkansas, uh, Mississippi and Louisiana, it's definitely still the early season in Arkansas, Mississippi, and most of Louisiana. Arkansas shouldn't see any rut activity at all, at all until the end of the month at the earliest, and that's only for northern and central counties, and it's kind of spotty, but the northern third of the state and the central third of the state seems to have a little bit earlier rutting activity um, than the rest of the state, which would be the southwest, south, and southeast corners. Um, Mississippi is definitely still showing early season patterns, but a few rubs and scrapes are starting to show up. Uh, continue focusing on those bed, food, and water-based patterns. Cody Kelly of Mississippi and co-host of Small Town Hunting, he confirmed this is what he had to say. Uh, it has been a hot, nasty, and dry season uh, to, to start the year with. He said lots of nighttime and irregular activity on cameras. He said there is a cool front coming and moving through tonight, bringing some northerly winds. Expect it to get the deer up on their feet a little bit earlier. He said the southeast can really be tough in October until you get a good weather front, and uh, then it can be really good moving forward from there. He also said focus on uh, mainly acorns uh, where there's a decent crop at or persimmons as primary food sources right now. He said where legal feeders are have really been productive because it's been so dry um, that you know the, some of the natural vegetation and browse has really started to dry up. So he definitely said that that's a great option, something to think about in places where it's legal deer definitely hitting the feeders. He said it's been extremely dry until now, so food plots are non-existent. Everybody is really scrambling right now to get seed in the ground uh, now that some moisture is, uh, has hit. Uh, he said use trail cameras, and if you get a shooter on camera in daylight, definitely keep the wind right and ease in and try to hunt him. Uh, hunt afternoons for now, but a good acorn flat during this cool front could be good mornings as well, he said. Uh, and something to think about too, you know, that's traditionally what I'm trying to do too and what we all try to do is, you know, get that first good daylight pick and then move in. Sometimes though, if you have a good buck that's on the fringe of daylight, but it just hasn't quite made it there during legal shooting light yet, um, sometimes it can pay to go ahead and move in and hunt that cold front, um, even if you haven't got quite quite got that daylight picture that you're looking for yet, um, because sometimes that, you know, if that deer's already been in there on the edge of daylight or on the edge of legal light, um, that can push him to come back in there and, uh, you know, be there in daylight the way you want him to be. Uh, Rusty said this week in Montgomery County, Pennsylvania has been slow. All activity is late. Deer are feeding at night. Uh, it's almost like an early October lull in his area. He said he's come out of the stand and into edges of the bean fields and corn fields to try to cut them off. Um, let's see here. Let's see if we have any other questions. Nick said the harvest is starting to occur there in eastern Nebraska. That should help the movement. Yeah, that's a great point, Nick. You know, whenever those crops start to come out, that definitely changes deer and uh, improves for, uh, the hunting for a lot of people because those, those deer just kind of stay in the standing crops whenever they're still in. Great point. Thank you for that. Uh, Kenneth Harwood says that the high uh, is in the 60s, lows in the mid-40s there in Michigan. Uh, Preston, we're going to get to Georgia here momentarily. Kelly says Vermont's been slow. Um, uh, let's see here. Mike says, wish Realtree would start the weather-based station uh, uh, app up again. Um, the best times to hunt, Mike, that is actually, uh, you can still access the best time to hunt on Realtree.com. It's right there in the deer hunting nest uh, of the home page of the site there. So you can go check that out there, Mike. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, let's see here. I don't know if we have any other questions or long reports. I think we're good to keep moving forward. Uh, we'll get to Indiana here shortly. Trent, 
Uh, like I said, we're fixing to talk about Georgia West. Uh, Justin said lots of acorns in northeastern Oklahoma deer are all over them. That seems, uh, you know, so far the reports seem to be um, that you either have them or you don't right now, regardless of what state you're in. Uh, the acorn crop has been very localized this year uh, and it's very spotty from not just county to county, but from farm to farm. Let's see here. I think that's all we got so far as far as comments. We're going to move on. Um, as far as Louisiana goes, it's still some decent rut activity in parts of Vernon, Allen, Acadia, Vermilion, and Iberia parishes. Still, uh, due to the fact that there are extremely localized ruts down there, parts of those very same parishes won't see breeding activity for weeks, if not months. That's how different and crazy the, and wacky the rut is down there, as you locals already know. Um, but those are the kind of the parishes to kind of be thinking about. Um, and in those parishes, it's mostly the southern parts for, for, for most of those uh, that are seeing that rut activity right now. Moving to North Carolina, South Carolina, and Virginia. North Carolina and Virginia will receive a big wave of cooler weather on Sunday. That cold front's going to hit and really peak and get good for us on Saturday uh, in Kentucky and Tennessee. It's going to kind of really kind of start to hit on Sunday for North Carolina, South Carolina, and parts of Virginia. Um, deer should be on their feet and doing pre-rut type things in daylight. Uh, definitely being a tree this weekend. As for rut activity, a few coastal counties in North and South Carolina are showing signs of, of the rut. Uh, in North Carolina, that's Hyde, Tyrell, Dare, Carteret, Columbus, and parts of Brunswick counties. In South Carolina, parts of Charleston, Col uh, Colleton, Beaufort, and Jasper counties are seeing the best action. It's definitely not peak rut there yet, uh, but they should experience some decent seeking and chasing activity within the next week to 10 days. Charles Ruth, the big game coordinator uh, for the South Carolina Department of uh, Natural Resources, said as much. Uh, he said the peak of breeding in most of South Carolina is mid-October through mid-November. Uh, he said right now they're in the pre-rut for the most part of the state, uh, but definitely the, the, the northern uh, three-fourths to five-sixths of the state is, is, is definitely early season pre-rut right now. Um, buck movements have ramped up as they are searching for the occasional early ovulating female. Temperatures have been unseasonably high down there, which typically negatively affects daytime movements for deer uh, in favor of nocturnal movements. But uh, with a much needed change in weather, which kind of will happen a little bit this weekend, but not as pronounced as the rest of the region, uh, things should explode uh, and really start to pick up. Uh, in Kentucky and Tennessee, as I said earlier, the cold front is rapidly approaching for the bluegrass and volunteer states. We're looking at a forecasted 20 degree drop for the high uh, in less than 24 hours. Now again, that happens from Friday to Saturday. So Saturday morning through Sunday afternoon is gonna be the best time to be in a tree. Friday afternoon is gonna be good too if you can get in there without you know having some uh, too, you know heavy rain and thunderstorms affecting you. Uh, but again, you gotta take advantage of those uh, big swings when you get them. Uh, there are very, very few 20 degree plus swings occur within a 24 hour period during deer season. So you don't see that a lot. Uh, some seasons you might only get four or five of those other seasons you know as we are right now we're on track to get a lot of them because we've already had two for some states three for others um, so we're on track to have more this year uh, but for most states you only get four to five of those a year uh, that are 20 plus swings in uh, a 24-hour period so take advantage of that being a tree this weekend um, so with that, Gabe Jenkins, you know, I, I touched base with him, who is the deer and elk program coordinator for the Kentucky Department of Fish and Wildlife Resources. He said things have been slow here, which I can confirm as well, with the exception of last weekend. Last weekend, we had a similar cold front, but not quite as pronounced. Um, but uh, he said all, overall, things have been pretty slow. Um, he said between the dry weather and heat, it's reduced harvest pretty significantly. However, with the rain and cool down over the weekend, we anticipate things to pick up. Uh, he said there's been a few reports of scrapes showing up on the landscape up until this weekend. Most movement was occurring, uh, you know, uh, during the first and last part of, of daylight and at night. Uh, he said feeding habits were focused mostly on mast in places where there is some and not everywhere has a decent mast crop this year. 
Uh, and personally, everything I've been seeing in the state is reflecting the same. Now, to those of you who want to see Alabama, uh, what's happening in Alabama and Georgia, uh, weather continues to be brutally hot in Alabama and Georgia both. The, the only Peach State counties um, that we've that were getting reports of DNR, or excuse me, getting reports of red activity from the DNR um, is in Chatham, Bryan, Liberty, McIntosh, Glen, and Camden counties in Georgia. Uh, again, they're just small little pockets. There's really not a lot of red activity happening down there, but you know there's a little bit starting to show, um, according to um, the DNR. Uh, and there's really not anything to speak of uh, in Alabama. So that's really what concludes our report for the Southeast. Here momentarily we'll be going over to the Northeast to get there, the, the report from our good buddy Josh Montgomery. But before we do that, I do want to jump in and see if we have any questions um, from the viewers here. Let's see here. Yeah, Edward, you're completely right. You know, he's given us a report from uh, from Louisiana here, and I'm going to try to get his comment to pop up there full screen. Uh, he says Southeast Louisiana doesn't happen until late December. That's that's exactly what uh, what we're seeing too, and historically have seen. Uh, thanks for that report, Edward. You know, Louisiana is probably, uh, with the exception of maybe Florida, Louisiana is 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 likely the, the the weirdest state in the country when it comes to good quality uh rut activity the, the span the window of overall ruts uh rut dates is is just really wide and crazy and it if you look at the historical rut maps for louisiana it's pretty wild you know how it can be just you know really hot here and then 10 miles to the west it doesn't happen for three months. So it's really interesting state. Uh, Louisiana, it really piques my interest every year. But, you know, luckily we have a lot of good people that we can rely on down there. And we can rely on the, the DNR to give us some good quality information for the rut report so you guys know what's happening. But, yes, for southeast Louisiana, several parishes down in that area, not all, they will definitely not see rut activity until the end of the year, uh, if not following into 2020. So... With that, I'm gonna see if we have any other questions. Uh, Jason German said Northern Indiana had a late crop plant this spring, so crops are gonna be up for a bit. Yeah, that's gonna affect you guys. Um, let's see here. Don't think we have any other questions for the Southeast region right now. We were gonna have Slade Priest on tonight, but uh, he just dropped a comment in the comment section, says he can't get on tonight. He's got two shooters in the field. He's been in the tree stand, uh, says he's stuck. He's waiting on the deer to clear out. So maybe, Slade, if you're able to join us later on at the end of the show, that's fine. Uh, just drop a comment in the comment sections if you're able to join us, and if not, we totally understand. Uh, sometimes, sometimes stuff happens. So hopefully we can hear from him tonight, but if not, we'll definitely get him on in um, in a future episode. Rusty's asking about EHD uh, in the Southeast Report. Yeah, Kentucky has had some EHD issues this year. Um, I actually can pull it up really quickly um, and get the EHD map for Kentucky pulled up. It has been a factor. Some people I know even personally have found dead deer this fall um, and this summer. I'm looking right now as of October 4th, which was about five days ago, um, there have been a total of 880 reported cases of EHD to the DNR. Uh, not Obviously not all of those deer have been tested, um, but there are confirmed cases of EHD in 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 counties. Now those are actually confirmed test positive results. Um, but looking at the state of Kentucky here, there's at least 75% of the counties that have reported cases of EH deer, whether they were tested or untested. So, you know, the hotbed, you know, at where we had that really bad EHD outbreak in 2017 here in Kentucky, um, it's not as bad as that. That was much, much, much worse. Um, this year, it's a little more widespread, where it was the eastern half of the state last year, uh, or excuse me, in 2017. This year, it seems to be across the entire state, but it seems to be the worst up and down the Ohio River. Um, and the top counties with the most reported cases of EHD in 2019 in Kentucky are Nicholas, Harrison, Robertson, Scott, Shelby, Oldham, Trimble, Jefferson, Meade, Breckenridge, and Edmondson counties. 
um, Grayson Butler, Warren, and Hart, and a few others have, have quite a few as well. But um, the definite hotbeds with 40 to 50 uh, plus uh, reports are Nicholas, Harrison, Mead, and Breckenridge. Um, so yeah, that's that's where the, the EHD is kind of the most focused at in Kentucky. There have been reports of other deer dying in Tennessee, not many, uh, but I seem to recall seeing that in the headlines. Um, I think Tyler Jordan just posted today that they found the big deer that they were they were hunting there on Real Tree Farms. Uh, I think they found him dead uh, this week. So that's obviously not something you want to see. You don't want to find any deer dead with EHD, whether it's a, a buck or a doe or a fawn or whatever. But um, it, it's sad to see in Mother Nature is Mother Nature. She's going to do what she's going to do. Um, so yes, that's that's uh, there are some EHD reports in Kentucky. Seems to be again. I haven't seen a test positive from anything in Georgia, but it seems to be. Uh, I think they suspect that that deer in, uh, on Real Tree Farms died from EHD. Uh, the big tall wide seven, or excuse me, the big tall narrow seven that uh, Tyler has been hunting. Uh, that deer was found dead, and, and they suspect EHD, I believe. So there are reports of EHD across the southeast um, as well as up into the Midwest, but we'll talk more about that with Tyler whenever we get him on. We're going to see if we can get our buddy Josh Montgomery from the northeast region uh, to tell us a little bit about what's happening up there. How you doing, John? Can you hear me? How you doing? Pretty good. What's happening this week up in the north northeast region? Uh, it seems like we finally got fall weather that moved in over the weekend That's great here. News. It's cooled down quite a bit. Good deal. Um, looks like it's looks like it's going to stay. I guess you could say pretty much seasonal throughout the the week and through to into next week. Yeah. Um. Parts of us uh, finally got some rain that we've been waiting for. Not a whole lot here at home, but we did get a few showers. Yeah. And then it looks like I was just checking the map and um, parts further up in New York and Connecticut, uh, Massachusetts and whatnot are getting several days of rain and it's been pretty dry up there from what I've heard too. Mm -hmm. So um, it's definitely a good thing for some of us. Yeah, <laughs> yeah and I, I failed to report that uh, during the Southeast report. Um, you know, we finally got rain here in Kentucky too. We received a lot of rain. I don't even know. It was at least an inch or two, uh, or excuse me, at least an inch, maybe two that we received on Sunday and Monday. So we've had a good, good bit of rain here as well. Much needed rain. I think it was the first rain that we'd had in almost 28 or 29 days, maybe, uh, maybe 30 days. So, uh, we are finally have some, some moisture, uh, on the ground and in the air. And we, we think that, th uh, we think, uh, thank the Lord for that. But, um, yeah, tell us what's happening up there. What's changed since last week? Um, well, with the cold front that came through, it seemed to, to get the deer movement up mm -hmm. a little better. Obviously starting to see some, uh, a little more buck activity. Yep. People were starting to notice some more, some more rubs popping up, uh, some more scrapes. Um, still seems like most people still have their, uh, mature bucks, Moving mostly, you know, last light, first light type mm -hmm. of deal. A lot of in the nighttime activity, which is, which is common for this time yep. of year. Um, uh, what else? Let's see. I'm also just so I, I'll just jump in too. I, I was out over the weekend, uh, and I'm just right here in Central Maryland. And uh, one of the bucks I'm after, I hunted him a couple of days. Wasn't lucky enough to uh, lay eyes on him, but I did see, I don't know, probably ten different bucks from one and a half to two and a half and I think one was it might have been a three-year-old um so they're still kind of grouped up I did kind of see them you know they're they're messing with each other getting a little aggressive with each other they're doing some sparring they kind of bump each other around a little bit and like I said I've I watched a couple younger ones making some rubs and whatnot but um by me I've seen every deer that I have on camera in that particular area pretty much <laughs> 
buck wise. And every time I've seen, seen a younger buck, I'm like, oh, no, maybe where's the, where's the bigger one at? Because he was hanging out with a couple, you know, most of the summer into the start of the season here. And uh, he never showed up. So I'm guessing that, you know, they're starting to, at least the mature bucks anyway, they're starting to break off and kind of, you know, do their own thing now yeah. and, and just break away from the younger bucks. They're just probably getting a little irritated. <laughs> well, I mean, so, you know, I say good, um, but, you know, sometimes it's good that they're with those younger deer. Uh, at least it's been my experience during the early season. A lot of times, sometimes, not always, but it, uh, some of those mature bucks that when they fall in line with those younger deer, uh, they can, you know, exhibit the daylight patterns of a younger deer. And I've actually killed a couple of nice bucks that way, but you never know. And as you said, you know, you just never know. So sometimes it can be beneficial that they're in those bachelor groups with younger deer. Sometimes it can hurt you. You just never know how things are going to pan out. But uh, it's definitely good, as you, I think you mentioned, um, it's definitely good in regard that there's less eyes because if that big deer's bachelor. Definitely. <laughs> it's definitely the hard part. The yeah. nose, all the noses and the eyes, it can make Absolutely. it tough. Great. So we'll see how that goes with, with him and, and, uh, I don't know, maybe I can still get him on camera and hopefully he's not going too nocturnal, I guess. But um, so that's kind of what I've been seeing here locally and uh, similar stuff from some friends, friends around, you know, a lot of the older bucks just seem to be moving mostly at nighttime. So, so um, and the weather is going to be pretty consistent here, from here on out, at least for the next week. So overall, before we get into your individual reports and from all your sources that you talk to, you know, just overall, you know, daylight activity said it's pretty low. Um, other than the mature bucks, I mean, I had deer moving at, you know, three thirty, four o'clock. So it, overall deer activity was pretty good over the weekend when we had temps, you know, Wednesday we were at 90 and Saturday we were at 62. Gotcha. So, I mean, they were up moving around most of the day. So overall deer activity was pretty overall, good. Overall, as far as rubbing and scraping, just general rut sign goes, um, how much of that are you seeing up in the Northeast right now? Um, I feel like it's kind of just starting for the most part, you know, people have been seeing rubs for the last week or two. And then now I'm starting to get reports of people, more people are starting to see scrapes, but still, it's still more rubs than scrapes at this mm -hmm. point. And, uh, as every day, every week that goes by now, it's just going to probably keep picking up as long as, you know, the weather is, is cooperative and, and keeps the deer up and moving. Good deal. Right. Obviously up there, I would suspect that the seeking, chasing, all the actual fun rut activity that we look forward to <laughs> each fall, that's probably not happening yet, right? No. I did I did have one report of some younger bucks bumping some deer around from, uh, uh, what was it, uh, Rochelle Hedrick in, in mm -hmm. West Virginia. She said she's seen some younger bucks getting a little frisky there, but – I, I suspect it was probably just that cold weather had them uh, feeling all sorts, you know, not not, not knowing what's going yeah. on. <laughs> what are your sources throughout the region and the different states that you checked in on? What are they telling you? So I spoke with uh, a buddy, Anthony uh, Bambach, I believe that's how I say his last name. Hopefully I'm not messing that up. He's uh, the assistant director of wildlife management at the Westchester County Anglefly Preserve in southeastern New York, just uh, north of New York mm -hmm. City and uh, just west of Connecticut there. Um, they're having a uh, bumper crop this year of red oaks and all the surrounding areas that he's been in, he's, he said you can't walk anywhere without walking on some red oaks, um, tons of red oaks uh, with some, some pin oaks and black oaks mixed in there. Not much for whites this year, but uh, so it, it's been kind of tough mm -hmm. for him and some of his uh, fellow guys, they did get lucky and tag some does early to start a season just last weekend. But it kind of has all the acorns and, and the mass crop has the deer kind of spread out. So it's been tough for them trying to locate some bucks. Mm -hmm. um, but overall, deer movement's been, been good with uh, the mature bucks moving uh, mostly at first and last light. Um, he's starting to see rubs uh, popping up. Uh, not much for scrapes yet uh, around his area. Gotcha. Um, Young bucks are still hanging out, kind of similar to what I was seeing. Young bucks are still hanging out, but he's not really seeing the, uh, you know, the older bucks, three and four and older uh, bucks hanging out with, with the younger ones anymore. <clears throat> um, so, yeah, the, the older bucks are becoming less visible, and they've also had – it's been pretty dry – uh, they've had a really dry summer up there as well, and like I said, they just they're just getting some rain that they've been he's been hoping for. So 
that's a good thing for them up Todd, there. Um, uh, it looks like Todd Darling is asking about Pennsylvania. Uh, do you have any knowledge of Pennsylvania as far as what they're doing right now? I have a quick one for Pennsylvania. I had some trouble trying to track down a few folks this week for Pennsylvania. Um, I do have a south – I guess it's a southeastern Pennsylvania. Um, overall, deer activity has been good. Uh, same thing. Big bucks still, still kind of laying low. Uh, it seemed to be breaking off as well. Um, it seems to be pretty common now. I guess it was about a week or so ago. You still had half the people kind of seeing the bucks all together. Now you're starting to see more people saying that the bigger bucks are just kind of breaking off and, and, and separating themselves. Um, a few scrapes and rubs, uh, still not a whole lot, but seeing a few here, some fresh stuff popping up. Um, a lot of that stuff's probably, it's probably happening after hours. Mm -hmm. Um, let's see, they also have a great acorn crop. He didn't give me any specific variety, but still lots of acorns there. Um, there seems to be, throughout, and again, it seems to be throughout most of the country this year. And obviously it's going to be different everywhere a little bit, but it seems like the red oaks, as you've said, and as Tyler has mentioned, uh, as has been the case down here in the Southeast, it seems like the red oaks have definitely been more prominent this year than the white oaks. Uh, so that even the other ones, the black oaks, the, the, the swamp whites, all the other varieties of oaks, uh, pin oaks. I've seen a few more pin oaks this year than I did last year. Um, uh, as far as pin oak acorns. Uh, which deer will target those as well. Uh, but but reds seem to definitely be the prominent one uh, of choice this year, uh, as you've said, and Tyler, and, and it has been the case throughout the rest of the country. Yeah, that seems to be the case. The one spot that I usually have great white oaks, I, I just haven't been to in a couple of weeks and hopefully hope to get down there this weekend. But um, I hope that's not the case because that's a good, a good draw on that particular mm -hmm. property. So, um so let's see. So like I said, I spoke with um, Realtree pro staffer Rochelle Hedrick, and she's up in northeastern, the northeastern part of West Virginia in Cabins, West Virginia. And again, uh, she she said she did see some younger bucks kind of bumping some does around. Like we said, I'm assuming that's probably the cold front had them had them all fired up there. Um, but she had she is noticing the bucks uh, still running together for the most part. Yeah. Yeah, um, again, she's as got to be expected this time of year. Uh, I've had some photos here in Kentucky yeah. of some young bucks, you know, nudging some does uh, in front of some trail cameras, and so I haven't actually seen any of it in, while I was in the tree, but I, I have seen some of that uh, activity on camera as well. So it seems to be the case, you know, as as is every year. You know, those young deer they start feeling a little bit earlier. Definitely, and and uh, I've seen more bucks this this weekend than I did does. <laughs> That's so. good. Uh, but anyway, she, she has a good problem, right? Um, she Again, she's got plenty of uh, acorns there in, in West Virginia. Uh, same thing, like we just said, the, the red oaks uh, more so than the whites th this this year. Uh, seen a few rubs uh, recently popping up, but not, not much for scrapes yeah. yet there. So uh, Nathan, we'll be talking about Missouri momentarily, uh, you know, wh whenever Tyler jumps on. Cody, rep prediction for Kentucky, you know, Kentucky is pretty easy to predict when it comes to rut, uh, rut behavior. Um, usually our best window is from November the 5th to the 15th, somewhere in there with usually a peak around November 7th, 8th, 9th, uh, maybe the 10th, depending on the year. Uh, really what it boils down to in Kentucky is will we get the weather to see that rut activity during daylight? Um, because oftentimes, even, you know, you know, there's a common misconception that weather dictates when deer breed, and that's not the case. Deer are going to breed when they breed. It's all based on photo period. It's based on daylight length uh, for the northern half of the country. Obviously, there are other environmental factors for the southern third of the country, southern half of the country, um, especially when you get down into Florida where they're doing all these, you know, all this rutting activity in July, you know. So there are other environmental factors that uh, uh, basically influence when the rut takes place for different places. And those environmental factors can be drought. They can be flooding. They can be uh, predation related. You know, it's different for everywhere down there in the deep south. Uh, but it's the exact same way for the northern half of the country. That's why Kentucky, uh, uh, Ohio, Indiana, uh, Oklahoma, Nebraska, all of your northern 
uh, in Midwestern and Northeastern states and even the Northern part of the Southeast, so, uh, such as in Kentucky and Tennessee, that's why theirs is so synchronized. And it's because it's weather related. You know, those deer have to drop within a certain window. Uh, if they, they're, you know, if they drop too soon, you know, it's too cold and they die. They drop too late. They don't have enough time to pack on the weight before winter comes. So, you know, it's the same throughout the country. It's all basically environmental uh, related. Um, so Kentucky, as far as your question goes, Kentucky, you know, typically sees that peak between uh, November 5th and 15th, maybe the 20th, but it usually peaks somewhere around that 7th to 10th, maybe 11th, as far as the good chasing activity. Now, peak actual breeding, which is when those deer actually lock down with does, um, that's going to peak around November 12th to 15th. But whenever I talk about, you know, peak rut breeding and peak rut activity, those are two different things. So, you don't want to be in a tree. Well, you do want to be in a tree, but, you know, the worst part of the rut is when the bulk of the breeding is taking place. And in Kentucky, that's usually somewhere around November 15th um, with, a, with an average 14th to 15th date. And then the good rutting, the chasing, the seeking activity that you really want to see during the rut, that kind of peaks around the 7th to the 10th. Um, sorry for that long-winded response, but sorry. Continue with your, with your northeastern report, Josh. No, nah, you're you're good. And we have similar. I feel like it's similar dates up here. Like you said, it's usually within a few days or so. I, I feel like it's pretty. Just after talking with people, it's pretty similar all the way up through the Northeast. Mm -hmm. And and uh, just like you said, I the, the weather it just it just dictates what you're going to see during the day for the most part. That's how I feel and what I've experienced. You know, when we have great cold weather early, just you know, end of October, early November, you see great mm -hmm. activity you know, leading up to the peak in the same way after all the way up through Thanksgiving. As long as the weather cooperates, you should see decent deer activity. So, but, um, is there, is there anything else you can share with us up there? Reporting wise, that's pretty okay. much it. What, what is um, your expectations for the weekend? You know, what's your advice for the guy who is potentially thinking about getting in the woods, uh, Friday afternoon, Saturday, and Sunday? I'll, just by checking the forecast for most people, it seems it seems to be pretty seasonal. Seasonal, I guess you could say the weather looks pretty average. So it could be hit or miss, I guess. It's not, you know, it's not going to be cold. It's not going to be hot. But, um, and there's definitely going to get some rain. Hopefully that rain moves out for the, the guys way up north in, in, uh, in New York and, and Connecticut and Maine up in there. But there, there's like a, a pretty good storm that's moving up the coast apparently that's going up through the end of the week. And like I said, hopefully for those guys, it's out of here before the weekend and they can get in the woods, but it looks like it's going to be pretty wet up there. But for the most part, it should be pretty normal. And as always, I get in the tree whenever I can. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. You know, the weekend's the weekend, but this weekend looks like it's going to shake up, shape up into a decent one. Yep. Good deal. Good deal. All right, man. Well, I'll tell you, if, we, if you don't have anything else that you can share with us, we will, uh, we'll touch base with you next Wednesday night and hope you have a great, great weekend of, of deer hunting up there in the northeastern part of the country. Definitely. Good luck to everybody. Be Thanks, safe. Josh. Have a good weekend. You too. All right. So thank you to Josh for that great report up there in the northeast. Uh, as always, he brings us some good information uh, for you northeastern deer hunters out there. Uh, we're momentarily going to be going to the Midwest region. Uh, we were going to talk to, uh, well, let's see here, Johnny, uh, Virginia. Uh, yeah, so far, uh, Virginia is showing some decent activity as far as just daylight movement goes. You know, no rut activity in Virginia. Virginia is much the same as Kentucky and most of the Midwestern states. Not going to see anything until November there, early November at the earliest. Um, um, so uh, daylight activity has been decent in Virginia, but it's going to fall in line with the exact same weather patterns as the rest of the northern states go, uh, Midwestern and Northeast. Um, you know, that, that cold front that's coming will get deer on their feet in Virginia, but that cold front, while it's going to really get good and hit hard uh, in Kentucky and Tennessee on Saturday, uh, it's going to be a little bit later, probably Saturday afternoon, early Sunday morning before that cold front really gets to where you guys are there in Virginia. Let's see if we got any more questions or, or any more concerns, any more reports. Uh, Kevin says, white oaks are basically non-existent this year in northern Virginia. 
He's in uh, uh, Loudoun County, I think that's pronounced right, Fairfax. Uh, been really trying to key in on the red oaks, pins, and persimmons. Deer seem to be hitting clover and green harder than the lack of acorns right now. Uh, Justin, we'll be talking Oklahoma uh, during uh, uh, the south, uh, the southwestern uh, report. Let's see here. Greg, you want to know when the rut will start in west central Georgia? Uh, I mean, obviously it's not happening yet, but if you do, if you drop your county in there, Greg, um, I can actually pull up some historical data, um, and then uh, we'll we'll tell you when the historical rut dates are window wise for the particular county that you want to look at, uh, courtesy of the Georgia Department of of, of uh, Fish and Wildlife or Georgia DNR. Let's see here. Georgia says he grew. Uh, George Vernado says that he grew up hunting in Southeast Louisiana. He's been seen. Uh, he's seen the rut last the last few years uh, as late as late March. That's interesting. Like I said, uh, Louisiana is a very weird state when it comes to rut activity. We'll see if we have any other questions or uh, general reports from our viewers out there. I think we've got one from Eric. Uh, Eric says, Wisconsin here. Uh, haven't seen bucks yet where he hunts. Just been seeing some does. But the cold front coming through and big temperature drop Friday should have deer moving well this weekend. That's that's a great point and uh, spot on from what we're, what we're seeing and hearing. Uh, Ronnie Miller says the red oaks are heavy in southwest Missouri. Uh, he's seen two small bucks um, heading to the to Acorn Flats this morning. Um, he said, Michael Williams says it's been tough in northeastern Virginia, or excuse me, northeastern Georgia. It's been very warm and dry. Lots of acorns on the ground there, all, uh, including whites, reds, and bur oaks. Uh, so that's good to see some white oaks on the ground. That's definitely one of deer, uh, one of uh, whitetail's favorites uh, in the hard mast category. Um, let's see here. I don't know if we have any other questions. I don't know. I don't think we have anything. Christopher says he's heading to Kentucky next week. What can he expect? Um, you know, as we said earlier, Christopher, you know, Kentucky ha has a really, really good cold front hitting this weekend. Uh, Saturday, Friday afternoon, Saturday, and Sunday are going to be the three best days of the season so far. Good news is that cooler weather is going to carry into next week, but it's not going to be as good next week as it is this weekend. So if you can get in a tree this weekend, definitely be in a tree, uh, but next week shouldn't be terrible either. Uh, it's not going to be as good as Friday, Saturday, Sunday, but it's still going to be decent weather. I think that's all we got. We're going to jump over to the Midwest region with Tyler right an hour and see what's happening in the Midwest. Hey Tyler. Hey Josh. How are you? How are you? Good. Doing how are you? Well. Doing well. What's happening in the Midwest, and uh, what's different from last week? Well, we've got another cold front, uh, like you guys have been talking about, on the way, and uh, you know that's really the big story. Uh, anytime we can get those, you know, they're they're welcome, but especially in in early October like this, and to get two two weekends in a row uh that's pretty rare so it's, it's you know most guys are gonna get out on the weekend so it's nice it's not rolling in on a tuesday or something um you know up northern you know northern part of the midwest um it looks like it's gonna come in friday uh friday night uh with some you know low pressure as you typically would see low pressure and rain ahead of it yeah um saturday and sunday look really good um you know as you get further Further out west, uh, out into the plains and whatnot, uh, it's going to roll through tomorrow. And then, uh, you know, tomorrow night, actually, some areas should be really good, uh, high pressure after the front rolls in and then into Friday. So, um, yeah, rubs and scrapes, too. Big uptick in the last week. I mean, daytime activity has been, been pretty good. Um, like that last cold front kind of got things kicked off and, 
you know, deer still on a feeding pattern, but it's, there's definitely been some good hunting to be had, uh, especially for this time of the year. Good deal. Um, you know, as far as just general activity goes, how, uh, how, how has the daylight activity been for the last few days? Uh, you've kind of already alluded to it, talked about it a little bit, but uh, how, how's it been the last few days and how do you expect it to be going into the weekend? It picked up, um, you know, when that front came through, obviously, and it was it was good. We got, a, a, you know, until Sunday, Monday, um, yesterday, and today it was a little bit warmer. Um, and then uh, it's supposed to s stay pretty decent after this next front comes through this weekend. Um, temperatures are going to be supposed to go up a little bit uh, throughout most of the Midwest early in the week, and then by the middle of the week they're going to they're gonna dip off just a little bit. Nothing super significant, but – they're going to cool off a little bit and have some more high pressure um, for a lot of the region. So this weekend, I mean, it's going to be really good. I mean, it doesn't matter really where you're at in the Midwest. Um, you know, the exact day is going to vary a little bit, obviously, if the front's moving from the west. Um, and like I already talked about a, a bit, um, further west you are, the earlier it's going to come through. So Thursday and Friday are going to be really good. Um, you know, if you're in the western part of the Midwest, out on the Great Plains, um, you know, here in the upper upper Midwest, Ohio, Indiana, Illinois, Wisconsin, Saturday night, it's, it should be absolutely dynamite. You know, that front's going to come through and that pressure's rising pretty much all day Saturday and it's going to peak out overnight on Saturday night. So when you've got high pressure rising like that and cold temps, I mean, you know, it's uh, that's what we look for. So, and even Sunday morning looks phenomenal and of everywhere I looked at, uh, if you're in Southern Ohio, I would skip church on Sunday morning and get in a tree stand because it looks really good. So uh, definitely a good weekend. You know, anytime you can get out, it's good. But uh, it's, it's worse, probably worth shuffling some plans around if you don't have free time <laughs> expected this weekend and make some. Absolutely. That's a great point. You know, uh, it, it, it's, it's going to be good. And if you guys have had deer on the edge of daylight, if they've been hitting those cameras or, you know, uh, right there just after legal shooting light ends or uh, if they've been hitting those cameras just before legal light starts, um, this weekend might just push them over the edge, and uh, it's definitely definitely time to be in the tree. Yeah. What are you seeing as far as rut sign goes, scraping and uh, rubbing activity? Is that starting to pick up at all there in the Midwest? Yeah, yeah. Here at home, I'm in southern Michigan, and I saw a big increase. I mean, the number of rubs probably more than doubled. Um, since last week, a lot of scraping activity. Um, it was kind of just getting going uh, last week, and it's really picked up. Um, I had Sunday night, I saw 10 bucks, and uh, a couple of older older age class deer, for, for Michigan anyway, a couple of three-year-olds, and uh, they had one come out at about 5 o'clock, made a scrape on the edge of the, edge of the alfalfa field, um, and it's definitely a, a lot more scraping going on. I talked to Mike Stroff with Savage Outdoors TV. He's down in uh, Illinois right now. And he said the same thing. A lot of new scrapes and new rubs this week. So it's it's definitely starting to pick up. And, um, you know, one thing I wanted to mention is you're starting to see those primary scrapes show up. And it's getting to be that time of the year, you know, within the next week. If you haven't moved cameras, if you still got them just on food sources, it can be a good time to get them moved onto those primary scrapes and, and start picking up bucks that have maybe moved in from other areas because uh, they're going to start hitting them. It's starting to, I've, I've seen a few that are pretty apparent primary scrapes. Um, they're getting a lot of activity overnight, obviously. That's something so. that I've done as well here in Kentucky. And uh, I, all of my trail cameras are on scrapes now, whether those are um, actual legit scrapes that a whitetail itself has made or a mock scrape that I created. Something that I did this year, and I have to credit, credit uh, Midwest Whitetail's Owen Regler uh, for, for the idea, but he has been putting in scrape post trees. And so basically he will dig a hole in the ground, uh, take a, about a six to seven foot um, uh, post. Uh, I prefer cedar posts. I know he uses just untreated posts. I prefer cedar posts because you get a little bit more rubbing activity, at least here in Kentucky, uh, deer like rubbing on cedar trees. Uh, seems to be their preferred favorite tree for rub activity anyway here in this state. Um, but basically, he just puts those in the ground, drills a hole in the top of the post, angles it up. I think he uses, and I used, uh, I want to say, uh, a half-inch uh, drill bit, and then basically just inserted a limb. And then you put your cameras on that, and then every year you can just put a new limb in there 
Um, usually red oaks, some type of oak limb seems to be the best. Um, maple is really good too. I like to use maples, but that's something that I've been doing, something I have to credit uh, Owen for as far as the idea goes. But like you said, scrapes this time of year are dominant for getting trail camera pictures. Yeah. Yeah. And they should only, you know, really should only continue to get more activity and, and get better here in the, in the coming weeks, obviously. So definitely a good way to pick up on, you know, on maybe new bucks that have moved into the area as well um, as they start to disperse. Yeah, I think, and just, and this is just my opinion. I think that uh, scrapes are probably the best for taking trail camera inventory from uh, early October, uh, maybe mid early to mid October, all the way until early December. Um, would you agree? And if so, yeah. um, what are your actual trail camera tactics that you use to monitor deer throughout the pre-rut and rut? Yeah, I'm definitely scrapes. I mean, that is the same as you. That is my, you know, my number one go-to um, for monitoring activity and just what bucks are around, um, you know, when running cameras. Uh, I'm not big on hunting over them um, just because most of the time that activity is going to be at night every once in a while you'll get one that's you know he does check it pretty regular every time it rains he's going to come through and you can catch him sometimes coming back in the mornings after it rain or whatnot um, I typically don't hunt over them just use them for you know for inventory uh, and, and keeping an eye on things it's a really good way to do that absolutely that's a great tip glad you brought that up that's certainly helpful um, you know and, and something that that a lot of times, you know, it, something little like that can be what it takes to to get that deer on camera that you otherwise would have never even seen. Um, so you could have just had that camera up on a field edge and in a corner or a part of the food plot or the ag field or whatever it is. You could have had that camera up and never seen that deer. Um, I've been in a tree stands, as you have been. We've talked about this a lot and have a trail camera up and watch a deer walk all the way around that camera, spend all kinds of time in that general vicinity, never hit that camera and never even be on that camera ever. So, right. you know, use, as you mentioned and brought up, I'm glad you did. Uh, that can make the difference in what, knowing whether a deer is there or not. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. As far as, you know, general uh, rut activity goes, not sign, but activity when it comes to scraping and, and rubbing and stuff like that. Are you seeing, or excuse me, uh, chasing and seeking, uh, are you seeing anything like that yet? I suspect it's still a ways off, but are you seeing any young deer do it? No, I haven't. I don't have any reports even of any young bucks, and I wouldn't be surprised if, you know, somebody out there drops a comment. You know, they've seen some young deer running around. It seems like always we start to get 10 days or so into November, and, you know, they start seeing these young bucks um, get a little frisky, especially with these cold fronts. It's, I wouldn't be surprised this weekend you see some some year-and-a-half-olds feeling their oats. Um but no, I mean, yeah, we're a ways off. About, um, a, about a month have seen a, Yep, yep. So, but I have seen a good bit of sparring, actually. Probably the most sparring I've seen, um, you know, or early. And, you know, it may just have been where, you know, where I was at. But I, everybody I've talked to has been seeing a good bit of sparring this week, too. Picked up, you know, nothing serious, but um, just tickling the antlers together and kind of sorting out who's boss a little bit and, and whatnot. But, but, yep, that's... That's about it as far as any actual, real, you know, rutting behavior. Is there anything so. else you can share with us from the Midwest tonight? Um, just looking at food sources. I mean, uh, you know, we're obviously still on a, you know, hunting a bed to feed pattern. in uh, here in Michigan, as with most of the Midwest, most of the country, um, as you and Josh were talking about, uh, red oaks are, are the primary uh, hard mast. And they're, they're really sporadic, um, all over the Midwest. Certain areas are super, super heavy. Um, you get up into the, the Northern, uh, lower peninsula here in Michigan, there's areas where the ground's covered with them. And down here where I'm at, they're really sparse. Um, when there's a heavy acorn crop like that, it can be tough. You know, it's kind of disperses that good food source all over. But, uh, if you've got a, a limited acorn crop, definitely focus in on it because they are hitting them hard right now um, especially if you've got acorns that are dropping just adjacent to uh, a green food source whether it's you know a clover food plot alfalfa field wheat field you know, whatever it may be um, they're, they're browsing on those and then uh, and then hitting that primary food source you know feeding on that overnight um, that's been really good and everybody I talked to said you know similar story acorns were more or less hit or miss um, but where they're where they're limited, you can really really cash in on them right now. Um, 
talked to Cole Winter uh, with Southwestern Iowa Outfitters, and he said down there uh, they're getting a, a lot of activity on wheat and brassica right now. That seems to be really, really hot. Uh, same deal from him, a lot of rubbing and scraping uh, increased this week. And deer activity, same as with really all the Midwest, has been pretty good and expect to see an uptick. Um, you're looking out at the Great Plains, like we talked um, earlier, that front's going to come through tomorrow out there, and they are going to have the best weather uh, throughout the next week. It's going to stay cold. There's parts of northern Nebraska and up into the Dakotas where it's hardly going to get above freezing for the next week. They're getting snow and, and whatnot over the weekend. So if you're in that area, get on a food source and uh, and get in the woods because it could be really, really good with this kind of drastic drop. Um, and even the southern part of the plains, uh, western Kansas today, I think it was 85. They're going to see like a 35-degree drop uh, from tomorrow to Friday. So something that significant, it's, it's going to really, really turn them on. Um, and down there, winter wheat and milo uh, is what's hot right now. Good deal. Good deal. Uh, what's your advice for the deer hunter? You've already thrown a lot out there, but is there any additional advice you can give deer hunters in the Midwest region uh, who are for, uh, thinking about getting in the woods this weekend? Yeah, I mean, if you've got a deer you've been watching, you know, and it's, I, I'm pretty hesitant with morning hunts. I typically don't hunt mornings until around the 20th or 21st of October. Um, if you're somebody that's in a similar boat, you've got a deer that's on the edge of daylight or you maybe have daylight photos, but you're waiting to hunt them in the morning. It might be worth rolling the dice this weekend. Um, I think I may even go out Sunday morning. It looks so good and break break my own rule. Um, but yeah, if you've got a deer, give it a shot, you know, because uh, we don't get these big swings that often like you guys have talked about already tonight. So, yeah, you know, you, you got to play the odds and this weekend the odds are good. So well, good, definitely good luck to everybody out there. Uh, it's going to be a good weekend to be in the deer woods. Good deal. Thank you for today's report. Uh, as always, it's a wealth of knowledge. Uh, you're a wealth of knowledge, and we appreciate you joining us and, and conveying all of that. Good luck to you this weekend as well, and we'll look forward to hearing from you next Wednesday yep. night. Yeah, you too. Good luck. Everybody Thanks, stay man. safe. We'll see you. All right, another great report from one of our reporters. Uh, we're going to be going more momentarily over to the northwest and southwest west regions. I'll get it out here in a minute with our uh, uh, mountain man, Patrick Maytine. Uh, but before we do that, I'm going to jump into the comments, see if there's anything here. I saw a couple roll through. James says he's in Florida. The rut's already started in his area. Some areas it's already over. He said hunting Florida is tough. Uh, James, I've I have to admit, I have never hunted Florida before. Uh, my tip for hunting in Florida is grab an umbe umbrella drink, a uh, virgin, of course, and, and maybe just get a Coke or some Pepsi. Go to the tree stand with your Crocs on and just have a good time. But in all seriousness, uh, you know, hunting Florida, I, I don't have any actual experience hunting that state. Um, that said, I you know, tactics are tactics. So... If you're having a hard time and you you've, or, or you haven't quite filled that deer tag, um, and uh, you're, you're still you know trying to get it done in Florida, if it's outside of the rut, focus on bed to feed patterns. You just got to figure out where those deer are bedding at, figure out where they're eating at, connect the dots. Um, obviously, water is going to be a little bit tougher to focus on in, in Florida because it's such a wet state. But bed to feed is definitely the way to go um, there in Florida. But uh, but yeah, so just focus on uh, those bed to feed patterns. And if there is some rut activity going on, um, try to find where those does are bedding at. If you can find where the does are bedding at, uh, you can kind of get between the doe bedding areas and hopefully intercept a deer um, as it's going and searching for an extra stove. See if we got anything else here. Don't think we have any other questions or reports. We're going to see if we can get Mr. Mateen on and see if he can join us. How you doing, Mr. Mateen? Good. How how's well, I've been getting very you were just talking and then I'm on. So that was odd. Well, that's, hey, we got you. That's all that matters. So tell us what's happening up in the Northwest. We're having our, our annual, our weekly Northwest freeze. All right, we're back. We got you. 
Yeah, I kind of missed a day, so this is. I just had to scramble just now. I forgot it was Wednesday. Oh, Sorry. You're fine. You're fine. <laughs> hey, life happens. Tell us what's going on up there in that part of the country. Well, I woke up this morning. There was snow on the ground, so um, that uh, signaled it was time to go coyote hunting. But um, we did get out quite a bit. We did a lot of walking today and got to look around. Um, did talk to my buddy up in Washington and. So it sounds like pretty parallel up there, what's going on here. Um, we're very cold right now. It snowed this morning. Um, snow at the higher elevations I can see just above me. And um, But it's supposed to warm up, you know, the weekend. Uh, we've got some seasons kicking off here in Idaho, rifle seasons. But mostly, those are elk hunters mostly. But there will be some some hardcore whitetail guys out. And um, Washington will have some, some rifle seasons kicking off as well. And, um, you know, it's going to, it's going to warm up slightly. I mean, um, five degrees, it's, it's in the thirties now it's going to be in the low forties. So still going to be nice and cool in the morning. So, uh, been seeing a lot of daytime movement with the small bucks and, um, the does in particular, uh, I saw does moving today at one, two o'clock in the, in the, um, uh, afternoon and just out feeding. So, um, but you know the the mature bucks, the trophy bucks, are still really nocturnal right now, and in a lot of a lot of my areas, they've completely disappeared. I mean, they've just gone off the grid. But um, you know, the guys that are going to be successful um, this coming weekend here in Idaho, um, you're going to have to get up on a high point, looking across these big canyons and, and glass into. That, that regrowth on the clear uh, the edges of the you know the 10 to 12 year old clear cuts the the brushy hillside that sort of thing um it'll be a, you know an hour or two movement in the morning and the evening you know and um if you're lucky you know you could find some bedded bucks but it's pretty pretty thick habitat so that's not real likely but uh this time of year when i've i'm guided buddies you know it's usually first thing in the morning last thing in the evening it's especially if the sun's out uh, with the mature bucks you know that if you just out to fill the freezer with some meat you know it's got to be no problem there's a lot of deer movement right now and of course um you know i get lucky with all the elk hunters and, and deer hunters tromping around they're going to kick things up they're going to stir things up so uh you know, I, I would just post myself on a good vantage where I can see some country and have some good shooting lanes and, and uh, just glass, glass, glass and be patient. Um, Montana, Wyoming, uh, same same deal over there. They're getting some serious snow in some parts of, of Montana right now. Um, that should, in some of the mountainous areas like the Bitterroots and, and far western uh, Montana, that could actually kick some bucks down into the valleys, make them a little more accessible. Um, I'm hearing from some of the guys over there, they're seeing a lot of rubbing already. Um, smaller bucks are starting to spar a little bit. So, um, and kind of the same deal. They are seeing more mature bucks during shooting hours than we are here. Uh, a couple of the guys complained that some of the areas they hunt along the Yellowstone in Missouri, the duck hunters and pheasant hunters are kind of messing things up a little bit, stirring things up. But um, overall, they're they're getting a lot better buck movement than we are here. Um, mature buck movement, I should say. And um, you know, like I said, a little bit of sparring going on, a little some some major rubbing going on. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised. I haven't seen any here yet, or um, I haven't heard any reports from Montana of, of of major scrapes yet. But I would think those will start appearing. Um, I know that um, Dustin DeCrew in Wyoming and Bighorn Outfitters, he, he's a big believer in mock scrapes, and he starts them now. And um, he's had really good luck. And I've had fairly good luck here, too, getting those, those mock scrapes started very early. And um, if nothing else, just kind of getting your area bucks just used to kind of dropping in to those places. Mm -hmm. um, but... Dustin's also telling me Wyoming is that afternoons seem to be better than uh, mornings for whatever reason. And, um, that's mostly on the fields. You know, their deer are a little bit more scattered than normal this year because of the, the super good moisture we have this summer. So, uh, 
you know, Montana, Wyoming, if you're hunting the prairie, prairie type habitats, you're really just going to have to cover some ground, maybe look into some areas that, that you normally would not um, think that bucks would be in this time of year. You just, you just don't know. The feed's really good everywhere across the board. Um, they don't have to go into those alfalfa and hay fields right now. They might be out in the, in the pasture coolies um, because of the really good green, mild, mild um, summers, and there's still a lot of green out there. So uh, kind of disrupted the normal flow of things. Normally this year, Wyoming, Montana, you'd be hunting, you know, alfalfa fields and hay fields, and um, some of those bucks are still out in the pasture. So um, if you're not having any luck on the on the um, agricultural fields, you know, definitely get out and do some hiking and glassing out in the, in the prairie itself. And um, I think that's about it in the Northwest as far as I can remember. Good deal. What can you, what, uh, what, uh, as far as just general rut activity, go, or excuse me, rut sign goes, are you seeing decent uh, numbers of rubs and scrapes up there? Also, uh, what level of rut activity, if any, at all are you seeing as far as chasing goes? Uh, there's, you know, there's no chasing or, you know, we have some some small, the young bucks are sparring a little bit. The um, rubs are starting to appear, but I, I haven't seen any scrapes yet. Yeah, sometimes I see them this early, but um, as I've said in the past, our rut here is is pretty surprisingly late. It's um, like the third, fourth week of, of November unlike um, the Midwest where they get kicked off a lot earlier than that. Uh, just because of the weather here, you know, we still get snow in May. So those fawns have to drop a little later than, than they would in the Midwest. And they also have to drop before um, we dry up in, in um, July and August. So they have a pretty narrow window of opportunity for, for the best um, survival. But that also makes our rut very truncated and, and very intense, which is, which is a lot of fun. Um, we don't have these trickle ruts that some areas have. I mean, our rut starts and wham, bam, and, it, and then it's over. So, but it, it just happens a lot later up here in the Northwest than most places. Now, Montana, Wyoming, they have more of the normal mid, you know, early to mid November type rut than we do up here in the in the inland, the, the true inland northwest. Good deal. What's happening in the southwest? Southwest. So talking to guys in Texas, I mean, all I'm hearing from everyone is just it's hot and it's dry. And um, and really the the farther south you go, the hotter and drier it is. I'm not hearing as many complaints up in, in northern part of Texas and eastern Texas as far as the, it's still hot, but it's not as dry as it is down south. Down south is pretty bad right now. Uh, they need some rain really bad. Um, and although the bucks did come into um, the fall in really good shape because of a wet spring and, and early summer, it's really dried out now. Um, I know that... Uh, Mike Strolf down at um, SOE Hunts was talking about doing some supplemental feeding down there to keep their, their deer in, in good shape. But, um, you know, like talking to Ronnie Parsons, he's in, in Central Texas, um, real good bow hunter. He's probably killed more Pope and Young Bucks than, than anyone I know. Um, so just hot and dry, so the bigger bucks are coming in um, at night, mostly right now. Um, they haven't seen a lot of big bucks. You know, he's expecting things to pick up as it cools down. And he said it. he does expect it to cool down this weekend. And, and he's hoping that that'll spark some activity. Um, farther north and, and west, my buddy Dwayne Purse and, and Stephen Tisdale, they're, they're saying the activity at feeders is still really good right now. Um, that is one, one good thing about having the drier conditions as those bucks are going to hit those corn feeders a little harder than they would if they were out there um, grazing on the natural forage. And um, this guy's been killing some big bucks. He's been um, teasing me some, with some really nice trail cam photos, you know, for the last couple of months. And and they are really doing well. It's um, I know of at least one buck, you know, touching 170 killed already. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if this weekend there'll be some more good bucks killed. They're still hitting those feeders really well. Um, so 
in East Texas, you know, acorns are going to be a really big factor this fall. So, um, you know, if you're in East Texas or um, even Northeast Texas, I mean, keep an eye on, on that situation. The, um, the, I'm getting reports of just bumper crops of, of acorns, particularly red acorns. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, as soon as the, when those start falling, those deer are going to be on those things, you know, um, that's going to be the, the hot spot for a couple of weeks. Um, and that's pretty much the story that I'm hearing out of Oklahoma too. There's a lot of, a uh, lot of acorns this year and, um, we're really expecting, um, that to be the hot ticket in the next couple of weeks. Um, the bucks are, you know, it has dried out down there, up there as well. It's, it's, they're saying they're hitting the feeders pretty well as, as well. Um, so, you know, ac uh, the, the acorns, the, uh, um, well, there are some, some parts of North Texas as well that have pretty good acorns. Um, some of um, the, the panhandle into the uh, North Central area have a lot of those shin oaks. It's, you know, it's only way high, but they make, they make really good acorns. So, you know, it's something to keep an eye on in the next couple of weeks. Um, you know, maybe get out of, out of your blind away from your feeder and, and do some glassing out in, in some of those areas. Um, that Chinook country, when I was going to college in West Texas, that was a lot of fun, um, getting out and, and stalking the, the, the Sandhill um, Chinook bucks that, that get in that pretty low stuff. They're, they're fairly visible and uh, a lot of fun stalking them. And it's quiet ground up in that, that sandy. Um, oh, it's still West Texas, I guess, but it's the northern part of West Texas. So that's, um, that's always a lot of fun. Um, now, moving down to Colorado, you know, there's still a little bit of standing corn they're dealing with there, but uh, not quite as much as last year because it's a, a little drier this year and they're able to get a lot of those fields harvested. So, um, you know, the bucks are, are more in their normal patterns of, of running the creek beds and river beds. And uh, seeing, you know, getting some reports of lots of rubbing, a little bit of scraping starting, just a little bit. Uh, they didn't think they were the, the major um, signboard scrapes yet, just kind of the um, aggressive displacement type scrapes. Um, the, so that hasn't really gelled yet where you can depend on, on the scrapes for, uh, you know, funneling deer. But, uh, you know, definitely things are warming up there. Uh, another couple of weeks, you know, we'll be seeing some, some major sparring and, and the major scrapes, you know, starting to, uh, to fire up. Um, Arizona, New Mexico, I believe there are some October uh, rifle hunts that will be opening in the next couple of weeks. And, um, you know, this time of year, you're going to find probably the biggest bucks are usually running in pairs, pairs or, or triples this time of year. But um, these early seasons for, for coos deer is all about glassing. I mean, coos deer hunting is always about glassing, but particularly this time of year, you're really going to have to be patient. You're going to have to find a really good vantage. If you're, if you're out scouting, I mean, you should be scouting glassing vantages. Um, you know, a place where you can get up on a knob or, or a cliff edge and really cover some country with your, with your binoculars. But um, I know when I guided down in New Mexico, I mean, we, when you found a good vantage where you had a good commanding view of a lot of country, we wouldn't move from there all day long. We'd, you'd glass for a couple of hours and stand up and stretch and rest your eyes and just go right back at it. Um, this is when the big binoculars, the 12 to 15 power set on a, on a tripod really come in, come into play. Um, because you're just picking a landscape apart. Those coos deer are really little. They're really hard to find anyways. But um, when you have the, the, the shortened, I shouldn't say really shortened movement hours, because what happens with the coos deer, you're going to have a spike of activity in the morning when the sunshine hits them. They're, they're real cold natured. So, um, you know, the, the, silver crack of dawn you may not see any deer wait until that the, the sunshine hits those ridge tops and warms them up a tad they'll move really good for an hour or two and then they'll find a bed but the reason you just keep glass and keep glassing because you know that sun shifts they're gonna it's gonna move them out of their shade they're gonna have to get up and find another bed and um 
you know, there might be a little 10 or 15 minute um, period of movement there where they, they get up and nibble a little bit and then they find another bed and, and um, bed back down. And of course you find them in their beds a lot too. That was always uh, with my guides and I, you know, we always had contests to see who could find the most bedded deer in a day. That was, uh, but you know, that's what those big glass are all about. I, why I own 15 by 60 Zeiss binoculars to set up on a tripod that's for coos deer period. I mean, and then, um, you know, and then have a spotting scope sitting there handy. So you find something suspicious, you can hit it with the spotting scope real quick instead of having to get closer to confirm. But um, again, you know, just uh, these early October seasons in Arizona and New Mexico, you, you're really going to have to sit in glass and you're going to have to be very, very patient and just stay at it. Um, population density in the south, in the true southwest down in the desert southwest is never that great anyways. I mean, you, a good day of coos deer hunting, you'll see two bucks, you know, so you really got to, got to be persistent. Good deal. Is there anything else you can share with us for the south, uh, excuse me, the southwest this week? It's all that comes to me right now, but the, um, again, Texas is still rocking, you know, they're killing some, the bow hunters are hunting now, they're killing some big bucks off the feeders, so, uh, you know, if things have been a little slow, it is supposed to cool off a tad bit, you know, this coming week, this weekend in particular. So, you know, if it's been a little slow at your least, don't give up. It's it's happening. And there's still guys I'm talking to are still seeing a lot of bucks. They're still getting a lot of nice bucks on their camera. So, uh, you know, there's those feeders or acorn tree. If you got one that's dropping already, uh, it's, it's definitely going to be a good weekend. Good deal. Well, good luck to you. Uh, thanks for tonight's report, and we'll check in with you again next Wednesday night. All righty. Thank you. See you then. All right, here momentarily. Uh, we may try to go to Slade Priest if we can get him on. Uh, I know he's with us, but I'm not able to add you still, Slade. Uh, I'm not sure why that is. Uh, sometimes... Some, I still not, I'm able to send other people invites, but I'm not able to send you one. Uh, of course, Facebook Live is sometimes is sometimes just a little bit jinky, and it just doesn't really have a rhyme or reason as to why it lets us add somebody and then not. Um, but while we're uh, waiting on that, I'm going to jump into the comments section. Uh, Bill Keith uh, says that he is in northern Kentucky, watching from northern Kentucky. He says that it is, there's a lot of deer moving, uh, a lot of does, no big bucks really moving a lot in daylight yet, but the smaller deer, younger deer, younger age class bucks, they're kind of moving more. Um, and then, uh, let's see here, anybody else has any reports? I don't think anybody else has any reports. Um, I'm still not able to add you, Slade, but I'm going to make it to where... I'm going to try to make it to where uh, I can make it to where you can request to join. So maybe you can request to join now. See if that works for you instead of me requesting you to join. You should be able to have a tab there now, uh, potentially. Uh, I don't know if it'll work yet or not. We'll see. We normally don't do it that way. Uh, we normally just go to where I'm inviting the different reporters on, but we'll see if we can make this work. And if not, worst case scenario is we have Slate on in an upcoming week. I, I can see that you're watching still Slate, but I just I'm not I don't have the option to add you to the live feed for some reason. Um, it may be because I'm not, I'm not sure why, but before, while, while we give a little bit more time there, um, just to kind of reflect on tonight's report from the different staple uh, reporters goes, um, you know, it's really kind of heating up across the Midwest, the Northeast, same story. There's going to be a really good cold front moving through the Midwest, the Northeast, and parts of the Southeast. Uh, that cold front, or excuse me, the cold weather has already been in place there in the Northwest and the Southwest. Um, but it's definitely going to get good. This coming weekend is the best weekend of the year so far. Um, and it's only going to continue to get better, hopefully. But again... If you can at all be in a tree this weekend, you need to be. Um, if you live north of Tennessee, it's going to get good. We have a 20-plus degree temperature swing forecasted to occur within a 24-hour period. Those are rare. We don't get, but 
sometimes some seasons we only get four or five of those uh, in a four, you know in a four month three month season so it's rare this year we're on track to get more uh, I think we've already had two or three depending on location so uh, again we're, we're forecasted to get quite a few of those this year already uh, but definitely being a tree this weekend I'm still not able to add you Slade I tell you we may have to wait and try again next week I'm still able to bring everybody else on that's uh, that's watching or most everybody I'm not sure why I'm not sure why that's the case. I can see that you're watching, but I cannot add you for whatever reason. I'm just not sure. Um, as far as uh, your own reports go, you can definitely uh, jump on Realtree.com. We welcome you guys not only to put your reports, and Josh Montgomery put this, our Northeast, <coughs> excuse me, our Northeast reporter. Um, he is in the Northeast. He just about put a note on this in the comments encouraging everybody to go to Realtree.com don't just put your reports here go to the Realtree.com uh, user generated report section and tell everybody what's happening in your neck of the woods um, so put your reports here so that we can call them out on the Facebook live feed go to Realtree.com and put your own reports in there as well also if you miss this on Wednesday nights we will be uploading this report to YouTube and also to Instagram TV so if you miss it here you can always come back to Facebook watch it after the fact oh you popped up momentarily there Slade I had the option to add you just for a half second and then it went away again um, so whatever you did there there you are we're going to you right now while we got you oh you disappeared on me again there we go coming at you Slade we've got it figured out Sending you an invite now. How you doing, Slade? Hey, Josh. I'm pulling over on one of my hunting roads right here. I'm How you doing fine. tonight? Thanks for joining us at such a late hour. Oh, no problem, man. No problem. I, uh, I just actually, the reason I was late, I had two shooters come into the field, uh, and my alarm went off to get on here, and I had to silence it so that, uh, so that I could uh, get out to stand, and it worked out real good. You know, I was hunting in Louisiana, and uh, a hog came in right at dark, spooked the deer off, so the shooters are all still good. Good deal, man. Well, sounds like you had an eventful hunt. We just appreciate you joining us. I know it's late, but we appreciate you jumping on here and talking a little bit of deer hunting with us. So tell us what's happening so far for your season, uh, and specifically down there where you're at. Well, um, you know, as far as here in the south, where I'm at, our rut is um, – I'm going to say the teens of December through the teens of January, depending where you are. Now, there's certain small areas of Louisiana uh, and maybe some areas of Mississippi that you're going to have a rut just like the Midwest rut. And it's weird because they'll have a rut like the Midwest rut, and it's like, I don't know if their secondary rut or more of the normal rut comes in. And the, the bucks rut a couple times, so it, you get a trickle-down kind of rut, but... Um, you know, in the south, in where we're hunting in Louisiana and Mississippi, of course, a lot of times we're hunting food plots or feeders. The acorns seem to be a little late this year. We've killed a couple bucks this week between me and my buddies, and their stomachs don't have very many acorns in them. Uh, I was able to kill a good six-year-old buck last week. Uh, killed him in the morning, got in two hours before daylight, and uh, watching cell cams, which are a game changer, and I, I knew that there was hogs in the field, slipped in there two hours before daylight, and the deer walked in an hour after daylight. So it worked out real good. But uh, scrapes are definitely showing up. Oddly enough, I still have, I don't know, four or five deer uh, in velvet. So um, uh, still got that going on a little bit. But um, the deer are moving. It's the last 10 minutes of daylight for mature bucks. And uh, I had, like I said, I had two shooters under me this afternoon, a four and a five-year-old, and uh, the camera saved their life. I have legal shooting hours, but the camera saved their life. But, uh, you know, it's just regular old stuff right now. They're establishing dominance a little bit. 
deer that have been consistently during the summer on one spot, they're venturing out. I had a deer show up on one of my cameras this week. I had not seen on camera since January of last year. But I know the neighbor, he's had pictures of him all summer. The deer moved on one night, just one night, kind of, I guess, just kind of seeing what everybody's doing. He came in, but, uh, uh, you know, they're just doing that, just getting out of velvet kind of stuff right now. But pretty soon, I'm, I'm expecting the next week to 10 days, the acorns will start dropping heavy. And we're going to lose a lot of deer on camera until um, until the acorns slow down gotcha. a little bit. You know, as far as the people who are going to be getting out and hunting this weekend, what's your you know your best tips and advice for the the guy or girl who's going to be getting out there Friday afternoon through Sunday afternoon? Well, um, myself, I'll be uh, I'll I'll be here around the house, Mississippi and Louisiana. Ryan is headed to our lease mm -hmm. in Missouri. Uh, and I know y'all been talking about Midwest all day. Uh, I think the green fields in the afternoon, uh, you know, I think are going to be hot. I think those deer are going to be on their feet earlier. Just, uh, I remember last year up at our lease in Missouri, it was our first year to hunt it. And when I got up there last week, October, I remember thinking in my head, do not miss a good cold front in October on those green fields. And that's exactly what's happening this weekend. So if you've got a lease or you live in the Midwest, man, I'd get on some food. I'd get on something because the deer are going to be on their feet hard. Um, you know, right now in the south, wind is everything. First thing I do when I get up in the morning is look at the weather, the wind. I know what spots I can hunt where. I'm running a lot of cameras, and I'm not hunting at all unless the camera tells me to go hunt. So uh, I think that's smart. You know, if you just got an afternoon off or a weekend off, you just want to uh, you just want to go hunt. I'd say get in an acre and flat and hope for the best. Just get the wind right. This time of the year, scent control is everything. I walked to the stand today with my shirt off, trying not to sweat. I mean, it's just, it's everything right now. And uh, you just got to be real conscious of that. You don't want to blow out your area, but of course, you want to rely on luck a little bit. And hopefully you can get in there with the wind right and want to just slip Absolutely. by you. Absolutely. You know, thanks for the report tonight. But, you know, moving forward, you know, you're heavily involved with Realtree 365. Uh, you're obviously with Realtree United Country. Uh, start out by telling us a little bit about the Realtree United Country, where they can keep up with you there, and also where they can keep up with you on Realtree 365. I tell you what's going on right now. We've got two new shows on 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 Realtree 365. Uh, I still have my show Trained Assassin on the Sportsman Channel. It's the last season for that. But our two new shows are Pay Dirt, which Bill Winkie and I are, and a couple other Realtree land pros are hosting. It's all about land improvement, land management, and it's making the real estate buying process not as scary. We're educating and we're featuring some properties around the country, kind of letting everybody drool a little bit at some of these awesome properties and very affordable properties. Uh, Hunt United, I guess, um, is our new baby. Uh, first episode came out last week. Second episode came out this week. Uh, what that is, it's all about Realtree and United Country, their new partnership, and Realtree land pros and their lifestyle across the country. We'll be hunting all across the country, myself, Ryan Wascom, Luke Mitchell, and then some land pros will be hunting across the country. Our first episode, if you hadn't seen it, I mean, it is one of my favorite TV episodes I've ever done. We were elk hunting in Colorado, was able to get on some really good bulls. I killed a nice Pope and Young bull. We were covered up with action. We saw an absolute giant uh, the last day of the hunt and just featured a really cool property. Episode two is kind of a preseason in Missouri. Uh, and then a really cool hunt from 7J Outfitters with one of our land pros who killed a really cool deer with a longbow. You don't see that much on TV. And um, these episodes are going to be coming out right now every week. And they may slow it down every two weeks, but the action's been hot. So we're doing it every week right now. And then our third episode will be coming on next week is our hunt from here in Mississippi, Mississippi and Louisiana last week. So that's going to be fun. Some of my favorite episodes, of course, right here around the house where I'm from. We're not hunting 180s, but we're hunting good, mature deer and having a Absolutely. blast doing that's it. That's great. Where else can they follow you, whether that be Facebook or Instagram? Where can they keep up with this late pre story? Well, man, I've got, uh, of course, check me out on Facebook and Instagram. Hunting Land Man is what I call myself. I find people hunting land all, all over the South. And so you can check me out at Hunting Land Man on Instagram, Facebook. Um, 
or go, you know, you can go to Realtree.com, and of course, you can find me through there on the Pro Staff thing. But uh, definitely, if you hadn't downloaded Realtree 365, it's free. Uh, one cool thing, you can download the episodes offline. So if you, you know, if you're uh, sitting somewhere with no service, you know, you you can watch the episode offline. And there's so much cool stuff. Like for instance, me, before I went elk hunting the other day, I watched some monster bulls on there because hey, you know, I want, you know, I don't elk hunt a lot. So I want to, hey, what's what what's these big bull? What am I looking for in these big bulls? I wanted to get some tips tips and tactics, and there's so much cool stuff. Of course, Midwest Whitetail Josh, which you're part of, uh, is on there. That's always a great story, and uh, there's a lot of cool content. Whitetail TV, the Grigsby, we got some good stuff going on there, and it's all Absolutely. free. Absolutely, it's a great resource. If you haven't downloaded it, go to the Google uh, Play Store or the, uh, the Apple iTunes Store. Download that app. It's full of great content, as Slade said. You can keep up with his story there on Hunt United, as well as Pay Dirt. Uh, get a lot of really cool content there, and obviously you can follow him on social as well. Slade, thank you for coming on tonight, giving us a report on what's happening in the Deer Woods, and good luck to you uh, in, the next co- in, the, in, the, in the coming weeks. And we'll definitely have you on again before the season's over. Thank you very much. We had uh, Missouri this weekend, Ryan, and in Kansas after that. We're going to have some good episodes. Follow along with us. If you hadn't downloaded this stuff yet, catch up because we're, we have to get you, rolling. Good luck. Thank you. Well, there you have it, Mr. Slade Priest himself, giving us a, a little bit of a rundown on what's been happening down in uh, Louisiana and Mississippi, telling us about his season. Definitely keep track of what he is doing uh, on his social media pages as well as the Realtree 365 app. Um, it's been a great week for deer hunting. Activity has been good. It's only going to get better as we move into the weekend. Uh, definitely uh, tune in next week. Uh, we'll be back here Wednesday night uh, at seven central. Excuse me, seven p.m. Central Time, eight p.m. Eastern, um, and we will give you even more information. Hopefully, a bunch of you guys and girls out there knock down some bucks and some does and fill some deer tags between now and then. But uh, we're certainly looking forward to to joining uh, and tuning in with you again next week. Again, like we've said so many times before, um, this is a party. This is a big tailgate for deer hunters. You know, we interact. We have a lot of fun. And uh, this isn't just us talking to you. This is us talking with you. So anytime you have reports of your own, drop them in the comments. Uh, If you have a report or a question, make sure you throw them in there. We will definitely respond to as many of them as we possibly can. Um, And for those that we can't get to on the live feed, we will jump back in and converse and communicate with you in the comments. So good luck this weekend. Uh, If you can be in a tree, be in it. That's basically the underlying theme for today's rut report, regardless of where you are. Um, it's going to be a good weekend for deer hunting. Good luck to all of you. God bless, and certainly have a good weekend.